Jurgen Klopp talking today in glowing terms about Maurizio Sarri, the Blues boss. And Jason, has he got a point? Have they gone slightly under the radar? I think they have. And I think one of the reasons for that is we just weren't sure what to expect. I mean, you talk about a dressing room that you're not quite sure how they're going to buy into a philosophy. We've seen them really buy into philosophies from Conte previously and then just as quickly, you know, it turned miserable quite quickly. You see the same thing with Jose Mourinho with much the same uh, squad. But I think we've all been surprised with the way they've bought into Sari's methods. By all accounts, it's very intense. It's very much detail-orientated. And I think for players, it's... it's, it's um, it's difficult to take things on that are so structured, but when you're enjoying it, when you're seeing the results, that's when players buy into it, and that's what we're seeing, none more so than Hazard. And I think that's a really key part of it. And, you know, Sarri's already said that he can be one of the best players in the world, that he can score more goals, he can get between 30 and 35 goals a season. And once you can get the best out of him, then I think you're well along the way to unlocking a lot of Chelsea's potential. And I think we're seeing that now, and I like that Giroud's in the team as well. Maybe selfishly being an old-fashioned number nine. Because he's a really big lump, that's why you like yeah, him. He, yeah, big and strong, <laughs> could head it, even though I couldn't. But I think it's Really, it's really great to see um, Giroud coming in there, really being that, that focal point of the team. And I think that's one of the main reasons why we're seeing so much out of Hazard as well. Another thing that Jurgen Klopp said, Liam, was that it's the biggest change he's ever seen in the shortest time. That's what, yeah, that's incredible. We, I, I just mentioned it uh, before the break. He, Sarri did an unbelievable job at Napoli. Not, and I, I will go on and on about identity, ways of playing, systems and structure. And what I'm seeing from Chelsea now... And, I, Eden Hazard in particular, they're enjoying the way they're playing. They've, they've got the most possession in the league, 71% possession in, in, the, in the league, averaged over all of their games. You name me a professional footballer that doesn't like to be in a team that have that amount of possession, that can express themselves and play. And what you're seeing as well is the fact they have so much possession, they're in positions where they can go and counter-press high up the pitch. And that's the way that... And, I, I'm, and that's my point about Manchester United players, watching Chelsea, watching Manchester City, watching Liverpool, seeing the way they're playing and looking at the way they're playing, and, and that plays a huge part in it. Look, I accept asking daft questions is my speciality, <laughs> so I, I might as well carry on. Go for it. Um, surely just winning games is enough. So why, why would that make players that much more happy it, it, to have an identity? It's so interesting. We always talk about winning football matches, but in order to win football matches, and this is where a lot of times we fall down, you need a process behind it. You need a process to consistently win football matches. So just looking at the wins doesn't get you there. You need a consistent process and, and the standard of Premier League now, you need players to be consistently playing in a way that's going to give them consistent wins over a long period of time. And that's what Sarri's done in such a short space of time. They've gone from playing five at the back, a deep block, to a complete, the other extreme of football under Conte to what he's doing now. He's playing 4-3-3. Three, three. And I think a key signal of his qualities as a coach is Jorginho could have gone to Man City and played under Guardiola and he chose to follow his coach from, from Napoli and join him at Chelsea. That tells you the regard that players have for this, this, this man as a coach and you see him players express themselves and play in a way that is, I can understand why Jurgen Klopp is speaking about them in, in such glowing terms. I mean, also as well, how, how far are they away from Liverpool? I mean, it's only two points <laughs> on the table, it's very, very early, but how far are Chelsea off of Liverpool, do you think? Look, I... <laughs> I think they're, they're, they're a team that could challenge and I think they started at a position where it was difficult. You look at what they have there, uh, 14 goals, um, you see their shots per game which is a really good indicator of, in regards to the way that they're dominating position and what I really like, look at the sprints per 90 minutes. 100.17, that is fantastic. But then Liverpool really consistently won one one so I think you're seeing that there's a similarity in the way that they approach the game. To your point, in regards to um, the way that they have this identity. You can see the similarities yeah. between them and well, you can see why Jurgen Klopp well, admires him. When you have possession of the ball, it allows you to be more intense without the ball because you're rested with the ball when you're in good positions to sprint. And I think Liverpool play in a certain different way in terms of their sheer relentlessness, of if they're, the, the lightning pace of their transitions with their front three. Chelsea are more controlled in their structure with the ball, but it allows them still to counter-press really effectively. And um, That's the point. When you have a structure, and that's something I'm not seeing with Manchester United, a structure with the ball, it makes you better without the ball and it helps with your intensity and the distance covered in the games and players are doing it for him. And I think on players sometimes the measure of a coach is how they improve already top players and I think Kante already is showing 
signs, showing things that I didn't know he had. Yeah. We know defensively taking up positions, blocking those passing lanes, being that defensive block for you to build off. But now we're seeing yeah. driving yeah. to the box. Now we're seeing driving with the ball, taking people on, being a little bit more expansive yeah, in his Sarah's passing. Had criticism and for that, though, Jason. People no. are criticising for playing Kante in that way. It's no. not his strength. No, I think he's absolutely shown us that he had more than we even thought. I think he's one of the most dominant players we've seen in the Premier League. For his position, he is someone who really you can build a team around. And, and he's someone who provides such protection, but I never knew he had such quality, quality on the ball. Right. I didn't know that he could find a forward pass. I didn't know that he had the engine to drive yeah. forward and get back as well. So I'm seeing improvements in yeah. players as well but, who are buying into his methods. Yeah, but that's a, it's really interesting you talk about Kante's role, how it's changed. The reason it's changed is because possession is so important for them. They need Jorginho in, in what you would call a pivot as a deep line midfield player who's always available, so comfortable in possession to build from the back. So Sarri has gone in and he's seen, right, how can I work Kante into my system, my way of playing? And he's getting, he's getting a, a different N'Golo Kante, who, by the way, for me, is one of my favourite players it, on and off the pitch. What a role model he is off the pitch and a fantastic footballer on it. And he's humble enough some that Paul Pogba at the moment, I don't see. He's humble enough to adapt and change his way to stay in a team and, and show a different way of playing. I love that Steve Walsh quote at last day. He said, we should play 4-3-3, drink more, to, drink more to the middle, can say either side of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd love that too. <laughs> right, tomorrow night, these two meet in the Carabao Cup. Will they rest players? Yes, 100%. 100%. But is it still important to both of these teams? I think it's not as important as it should be, and I think that should be a concern. Um, you know, as a player, you... I was lucky enough to have a 15-year career. And within those 15 years careers, within um, injuries and loss of form, etc., you may get 10 opportunities to really have a run at a cup competition. Yeah. And for players, you want to be playing in these games. And yes, it might not be as high profile as other games. And you, see, and you can see the change in dynamic as you get nearer to the final, because players want to play in these games. From a manager's perspective, I can understand why you're trying to protect your players, you're trying to look after their legs, you're trying to give other squad players an opportunity mm -hmm. to start as well. But I think the most important thing is that you're picking a team that you genuinely believe 100%. can win the game. And I think when we're seeing teams who are picking teams who look, you know, not nearly as strong as they could be, then I think we're having some problems and, and it's a worry for the competition, in my opinion. I mean, regardless of the teams they put out tomorrow night, be if we see anything football. like the drama we did tonight, we'd be very be happy, fantastic. won't we? No, the quality of football on show will still be outstanding. You know, these are two squads that have the ability to rest players and bring world-class players in, 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 in place. So I don't, and, and also, you'll see two teams playing, one team playing the clock way, one team playing the Sarri way. And I think it's going to be really interesting because Chelsea do like to have possession and sometimes Liverpool are most dangerous without the ball. So I still think you're going to see goals, you're going to see fantastic football, but you're going to see different personnel and it's going to be really interesting. You see, I, I accept Jason's argument, but at the same time, I think with the League Cup, mm. chance to see other players in the squad. Yeah. Often the big clubs reduce their prices dramatically. Yeah. And when, if it's one of the big clubs who's already in Europe as well, they want to see different players. The support to say they quite like it. And, and also, it's a great vehicle for young players to be given their chance. You know, we, we spoke about young players being given a chance in the Premier League, and this is almost like the next step. You have your under 23s football, and now the Carabao Cup's become more of a development almost competition for these top teams where you're seeing the likes of... So Trent Alexander, Under Arnold, for example, got his first chance at the Carabao Cup. Outstanding. Leaves Klopp with no doubts about his ability to play at first team level. Now you see his performances. So, yeah, there are pros and cons to, to the Carabao Cup. And I think it's a great competition. And, and I, I see why people speak about resting players. But if you look at the sheer finances of the game now, how important staying in the Premier League is or how important getting into the Champions League is, even you see championship clubs now resting players because they're looking at, well, we could get £200 million next year by getting promotion. So the finances come into that as well. But I also think it's a fantastic competition. I yeah. got to the cup final with Wigan, and it meant so much yeah. to that group of players. Yeah. And I think, now, whether they rest players or not, what you're going to see is great drama, what you saw today. You're going to see players committing, because there's no way that players go into that game and hold anything back. You saw those Derby players giving everything to the last minute. They've got other... They've got um, championship games coming up, which are so physical, so difficult, but you didn't see any sign of them holding back in those games. You didn't see any sign of Man United players holding back, and I agree with your point. We see some talents coming through that maybe we wouldn't have had an opportunity to see, so it's a wonderful opportunity from that perspective. Well, they've got Bolton at the weekend. Do you think they'll fly in there on air? <laughs> <laughs> because 
they, they will just be sky high, won't they? After they tonight? will be, and and the the confidence you'll take from their performance today, the confidence they'll take from from the win to take that into the next game. Sometimes that's more important than the tiredness in your legs because yeah. we've gone to United and we've won, and now we're going to go. But sometimes again, it can go the other that's way the because mentor, to take yeah. it down from that level that you've been at can sometimes be a challenge. But either way, if you're going to last the pace of the cup as well as as well as the league, you're going to have to find ways to motivate yourself through those through those challenges.